evening or two to five viewers. It's time for a new top three. My name is Alina. And I'm Ilya. And today we're talking all about card games, but before that, on a serious note, um, we probably have a little bit more viewers. And we want to thank everyone who has subscribed to our channel so far. Uh, I think there is around 450 subscribers. That's really cool. That's a lot for us, at yes. least. Uh, so thank you very much. And I hope we'll have more subscribers in the future. Like every reviewer uh, wants, probably. Uh, that's my opinion, but yes. whatever. So let's go to card games. Uh, before we start, yeah, uh, we should uh, maybe mention our honorable mentions. We, we talked before we started recording the video that uh, we have uh, at least one game to talk about each that didn't get to our top three, but we want to talk about it so much. So, yes, but before that, <laughs> even, before, even before that, okay, <laughs> yes, even before that. So, the card game might sound easy, but actually it was yeah. much harder for us to pick because the way we feel the games, the card game is quite different. We had quite a big argument with Ilya, what is card game for each of us? Mm -hmm. For me, the card game is the game where the main mechanic is, or main um, actions, everything is done with cards and the rest you have is more like supporting. If you have a board there where the location of pieces is important, then for me it's kind of not card game anymore. So it has to be everything mm -hmm. with the cards. It's almost the same, or yeah, the core mechanism is uh, is all about like manipulating cards in some way, various ways, like hand management, set collection, deck building, and so on. But even if the game has a board, I may consider it a card game if everything is done. That basically everything is done with the cards, mm -hmm. then I will consider it a card game and probably BGG as well. I don't think so. That's the thing we check on the BGG. Uh, we checked one. Few, few of the games didn't match with our opinion. What are yeah. card games or not? Yeah, so. few, few games, yeah. So that can but be different. one game, yeah. Anyway. That's your honorable mention. So my honorable mention is not like the fourth game that I didn't fit in there, but for me the honorable mention is the game that it's just on the edge of being card game or not. So theoretically for me it's card game, but I don't feel it like card game. Mm -hmm. And it is Abyss. It's absolutely gorgeous game. It is set collection. Most I think is done with cards. The board is more like supportive. I don't know what I like that much in the game. It's not only the artwork, but something is really appealing in the game. So each time I play, I put it together and then I still start thinking, oh, I want to play it once again. I want to play it more. And each time I play, I want to play it even more and more and more. So and probably something it's, is... It's uh, interactive, but in a good way. Uh, it's probably straightforward, simple. Yeah. It's French design, it's Bruno Cotola. It's so easy, it's so like, oh. it's the game where you don't really have to think hard. Mm -hmm. I call these kind of games lazy evening games, so where you can relax, you can rest and play. Okay, my honorable mention is Seven Wonders Duel. I had the spoiler right here. <laughs> I thought but it would be much higher on your list, actually. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I first, first I considered it to be higher on the list, but then I changed the things a little. Because the thing is that my top one was a uh, obvious choice, and then two to like lower numbers was quite hard to put into into like uh, okay. order mm -hmm. into order. So, um, so on this duel itself is a really simple, straightforward as well. You have here you have Anton Bauza, you have Bruno Catala. It's a French design as always. Uh, Bruno Catala is involved with uh, all the great games. It's the two-player only game, uh, it's uh, similar to Seven Wonders, but I would consider them to be different games, although mm. they have very many similarities. But it's a drafting game from the center, and you're just collecting different resources, uh, science uh, symbols and so on. It's like a 
all around the drafting asset collection and you have different winning conditions that's really cool. You have this warfare, science or points at the end of the game and it's really fast and I yes. can teach it to everyone because it's language independent as well. So there are many pluses for that game. Well, there's one more thing I like in the game uh, is that each turn goes really fast. So take card, take card, take card, yeah. take card. So it's this is really good thing in the game. It's not in so many. You, you don't have too many uh, way, like too many places where you have to think a lot. Just maybe a few. Yeah, it's it's not that overwhelming uh, when you choose the, what cards because you have a limited choice. Yeah. But all the choices are interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like in Blood Rage where you choose from uh, uh, eight cards and then you like oh, and they're this all great. Is, yeah, they're all great. Yeah, all the Blood Rage is great. So. This is my honorable mention, your number Yes, three. number like top three now. And yeah. my number three game is Deck Builder. And it's quite a unique deck builder that we tried only recently. Mm, and it is... Sorry? <laughs> Dominion. <laughs> and it is yeah. paperback. Okay. It is Scrabble meets Deck Builder. Okay. It is really unique the way you feel. It's officially, it's like mechanic is Deck Builder, but you feel it quite differently. Mm -hmm. I like that you can play it to get like the same with non-gamers and the gamers it will be the same engaging same fun because if you, you, you like you think different in the game you have to have like a good hand you have to have like good letters there and with a perfect um, like match with the wilds there to get good words. Mm -hmm. It's we thought with Ilya that our English is quite decent until we play the game. <laughs> yeah. Then we realized... The thing is that you might know many words, but it's still quite difficult to combine letters into words, where you just have them randomly in your hand, it's like, uh, um, what mm -hmm. should I like put out here? I think the gamer's aspect here is the, um, the special powers in the cards. Mm -hmm. But what makes it uh, appeal to non-gamers probably is combining the words. So, for example, if you play with a non-gamer, you just uh, tell him to combine the words and see what will happen. And that's thus who will learn the game and not uh, like we try to think what special abilities, what all the special abilities we want to trigger on the cards as well, but it's probably uh, too overwhelming for, for non-gamers. Might be, might be. But I don't think so, but still, I you think what non-gamers, yeah, yeah, what non-gamers would like there is like the regular that like will recognize Scrabble. And there are many expansions in the box that mm -hmm. you should play with. Uh, definitely the uh, theme cards, uh, where if you say the word that fits the theme of that card, you get that card. This is like five extra points, and it goes back and forth depending who says the last word, depending on the theme. And there is that special powers, although not all powers were, for Balance. example, my, my, yeah, my power was useless for me. My power was really good. Yeah, so maybe there's a small uh, unbalanced uh, thing with the powers, but basically the powers are still really cool. Which the I game think. is awesome, that's yeah. the thing. All the rest is just... Yeah. So let's go to my number three, and yeah, my number... Three is um, Elysium, and I should first of all say that it has a gorgeous artwork and it has a gorgeous insert. That probably you um, there there's there are eight different artists for the artwork, so you can, for example, see and choose your favorites from amongst them. But basically, that's a lot of decks that you um, choose from. You take uh, five decks out of eight available. You choose them randomly or whatever, or by yourself. You combine them all together, and then you play a game. You have that drafting from the center. Uh, then you have the cards with different powers. There are different insta cards. You know, um, some once per turn cards, some other cool cards that benefit you, but they benefit others as well. And how you score as well is like you have to put the cards into Elysium. For that, you need this Lyra actions and so on, the set collection to score the points, families and whatever these things. So it's abstract, it's quite as abstract, but everything of that card manipulation plus this uh, option of cards, mm -hmm. where you need to think what columns you discard in order to get cards, you know. 
it's really cool. Yeah, there's quite, quite a lot going on in the game, in a good sense, definitely. And we liked it quite much as a two-player game. Mm -hmm. Some people did not, but felt quite I would recommend it as a two-player game as well, very much. So, your number two? My number two is Tajemnica uh, Domovstvo or Mysterium. Well, for us it was for a long, for a long time the Polish version, but it's the same, it's Mysterium and it's great game. It is like, uh, okay, so many people compare it with Dixit. Yeah, you can compare, but it is different. You have to think much harder there, especially if you're a ghost. You have to figure out the good clues with uh, often bad cards that you have, and then mm -hmm. you have to listen how other people think, how, what, how their logic works, and then you have to put the cards using their logic, not the opposite way around, because they don't hear you. And that's really engaging. It's, it, I wouldn't, wouldn't call it a game, a gateway game, but that's a game that definitely works well with non-gamers. We usually play it first time, I'm usually the ghost, the next time, ooh, I want to be one, I want to be one, and then we yeah. play until the, like, basically the whole circle. Now each, until each player gets a ghost. Yeah. Um, now that's the game that was with uh, Abyss for you. Mm -hmm. That's the game where theoretically I would put it as a card game, but I just don't feel it as a card game myself. That's the thing. I feel it's more as a cooperative or a party game or a gateway game. Yeah, just just the feeling, you know. But I theoretically I would put it as a card game as well. And it's a uh, I like it quite much. I like it probably as much as Alina, mm -hmm. and that's why it's probably in it isn't in my top three because I just didn't consider didn't have a feeling of a card game in it. Ilya had a feeling that it will be in my list, so it will be mentioned. Yeah, so we will get the new version, the Asmodee version, soon of that game. That gorgeous with big uh, ghost screen probably played. Mm -hmm. I'm really, re really looking forward to Hidden Science, the first expansion as well, yep. to get more variability. So, um, my number two is a uh, crossover, sort of. And it's Abyss, <laughs> yeah. Now the, cool. now the thing is, um, when I considered things, Abyss was lower on the list. I was even thinking about uh, taking it off the top three, but then I realized that I think I like Abyss quite a lot, quite much. Um, I, considered it, I consider it a card game. Yeah, you have a board, mm -hmm. it's a functional board where you put all the things, but it's just a gorgeous illustration, that's the thing. The board functions well to hold the cards, but basically it's a card game. You can take off the board and you, you can play uh, it without the board as well. The board doesn't give you some functions like worker placement spots, you know, on in worker placement hate games. I that comparison, but kind uh, of have to agree. I know, but yeah, it's just... For me, it feels a card game because mm -hmm. all you do, you explore to get the cards into your hands. You, uh, as a hand management, you play these cards to get the lords. Lords are the cards as well. Whenever you get a collection, a set of cards that with the keys, you get the location. Now, the location tiles are not, but location tiles are basically for me as a supportive component to score some extra points, you know. Uh, and the gems and everything. So, I just, or, or these are not pearls. Uh, pearls, not gems, yeah, the, the pearls and everything, it's all supportive for me for a card game. So I consider it, consider it a card game, so, yeah. but it's gorgeous, uh, it's just a cool, uh, really easy in, in learning, in playing, mm -hmm. uh, you just, uh, you have that push your luck element, I, I, like, oh, yeah. I like one thing there. Uh, mm -hmm. quite much is when uh, your push your luck um, when you when you take the cards in you know mm -hmm. uh, by that if you if you want more choice by that you will uh, give the more choice to yeah. you give more choice to other players as well so if you want more the other place will get more as well so you sometimes you think like mm, I want to explore more maybe I will get a better card but then the other players will get more things as well so it, I, li I like that aspect Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to say that. Probably. It's okay, it's okay. Sometimes the brain doesn't work. Let's Are go to our... number one? Yeah, to our number ones. My number one should be quite obvious, at least for Ilya and for some of our viewers. 
it is Flip City. I am madly in love with the game. It's just insane. Um, it clicked with me right away. Love, it's love, <laughs> love, love, love. It's again a deck builder that, that doesn't feel like a deck builder. You have cards that are both way, and like you can either buy the new card or you can upgrade. Just take a card and put it other side, and it's usually upgrade better. Upgrade from the discard, yeah. Yeah, from mm. the discard. Now you can take from middle as well. Oh yeah, yeah, right of course, away. of course. So actually, the, there is one more really good thing in the game. It's a push your luck element. Push your luck element is usually not what I really enjoy in the games. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I think this is because I really like cautious player. I'm not. I don't have that. You know, excitement. Ooh, let's let's try. So, I'm usually this is not my type of games. But this one has really that good tension. You have the constant like small tickling in there. So, mm, will I get some more? Yeah. It's so much fun, and it's actually quite short, which is definitely good with this game. This kind of game shouldn't be long. Yeah, it's a un unique deck builder. I think probably why we uh, I, I enjoy this game as well, uh, why we enjoy the push like aspect here, not in other games. In other games, it's more of that you have a closed deck where you take yeah. the cards from, you know, and basically you add, add, add cards all the time, you know. But here you, you know more about the deck, your deck, you, you know exactly what you have at the beginning of the game you know exactly what you have drafted into your deck later so you probably can figure out what how many unhappy faces are left and so on and you see the first card all the time mm -hmm. even when you start you already see the first card it's not like you in the portrayal you just uh, pull the card and see oh I got this one as the first yes, card. Yes, okay, you can whatever. actually count quite well, like, what are your possibilities to get good cards or what are your possibilities to get, like, the sad yeah. face. It's not as random as some mm -hmm. think, because you can manipulate it a lot. Quite a lot, yeah. And, yeah. Although, um, although it's, it's, it's not that interactive. There are some things that you can interact with when you pay a lot of gold. You can put a bad card into your opponent's discard pile. But on the other hand, you know, it's it's uh, a lot of gold, in the, a lot of currency inside the game, so you better buy a card for yourself rather than then. It's not that important in the game. It doesn't... It, it's not like really, like, multiplayer solitaire game, because it's, it's just different. You, mm -hmm. don't, you don't really feel that you need that interaction, you are absolutely fine without it as well. Yeah, it's... Uh, we have played it with two players, I've played it with another player, with as a two-player game as well, so probably as as I already told, many deck builders are best with two or three players normally. So this one is great with two players as well. So uh, yeah, I'm we really really looking forward for expansion reuse reuse, and then the like we'll uh, have it already. That's the thing. No, I in know. April, and then there is another the another like. Um, standalone expansion, I guess, something as well, but something with the design town, sort of the same. Yes, universe. but they are gonna, uh, okay. they are gonna publish it by Tasty Ministerial. We know that for let's sure. Go. Okay, let's they go. They told it would be oh. silly not to. So let's go to my number one. I always look into this notebook that Alina um, gave me, but I don't know why, because I know my yeah, number one. That's and it's probably obvious, would you want to no, name it? I have no idea actually. Really? I'm, I'm really lost. Think a little, just think a little. What, sh what can it be? Uh, I, I don't know, let's, what not I waste, love. let's not waste time. What was in my top 10 before? It's really easy, it's Valley of the Kings. It's my number one. And um, I don't know, it was, it was my obvious number one, I put it in my top one. Valley of the Kings is a pure deck building game. But now, the thing is, I love many aspects of this game. I don't like the artwork that much. I like the artwork there, actually. Yeah. I really do. It's, it's different, but it fits so well there. Yeah, but the gameplay itself is how you score. To score, you need to... It's sort of the same as with Elysium. You get a bunch of cards, but if you will not put them uh, into... Uh, into Elysium itself, you will not score the points. Here is the same. 
you can collect a bunch of cards, a really good cards that will give you even more cards, special abilities and so on. But if you will not entomb these cards, if you will not put these cards into your tomb with special entomb action and collect the sets of these cards, you will not score. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You, and wh why I like this game, I have tried it with uh, two players, I have tried it with uh, I think three players and four players. With all the counts of players it plays really well, it plays fast, uh, it's very finky on the other hand, I like the crumbling of the pyramids, I like how you draft, you can buy cards from the base of the pyramid but you can manipulate the pyramid so you can get the cards from the higher or when you buy a card the pyramid crumbles and the cards become available that were higher on the pyramid. And you need to balance out um, this thing of like, should I keep this card, should I keep this powerful card uh, in a deck to use it? Or should I entomb it? Because at a certain point of time, uh, when you get to the end of the game, you should already have a considerable amount of uh, cards in mm. uh, in your tomb. A already small, like not the small, quite big collection of cards. If you want to win the game, that's the thing. But you need to get rid of these cards from your deck, and that's cool. There's mm. one more really good thing in the game. Think, how many deck builders can manipulate with opponent's deck and discard? Not too many, mm -hmm. but this game really has that. So yeah. you choose in which order do you want to discard them, but you have to think like quite a lot because you can get the cards from the discard pile to your pile or to your hand, but that it make that it means that your opponent can, uh, can either steal or do something with yeah, them. Yeah, mm -hmm. So. That's really unique and cool in the game. And we got variability in the... Um, we, have, we have the afterlife, the standalone expansion, uh, so we can mix and match all the decks and try different uh, cards all together or play them as separate games, separate cards uh, sets. So that's everything what I like about the Valley of the Kings. I'm not into deck buildings, but this one it's so fast, engaging, it's so thinky, but mm -hmm. in a good way, you m can manipulate in lots of different ways, and that's what I like. I like the card manipulation, mm -hmm. and here it's uh, it's done in a best way possible. Yes, I agree. And yeah, st still this thing where you need to consider whether to have your card in your deck or in Tomb Bits. Just genius. This game was actually in my top three, but then I looked at my top three and realized, hmm, my top three uh, card games is actually my top three deck builder, so I took out <laughs> one of the games. Why? Okay. Because I really yeah. felt that I can't have all deck builders there, so and I felt that Action and Mysterium is quite a card game, and I actually enjoy it quite a lot. So yeah, I made a small switch. Now let's go to our friends' picks. Dear friends. Um, Kyle. And uh, if you have watched our videos before, there's no surprise. Kyle picked Summoner Wars. <laughs> How many times? I know I haven't counted. Yeah. Like five times? Yeah, um, okay. And he says, the game is all about cards. It is not your traditional trick-taking game and you aren't just playing cards on the table from your hand. Each card represents a careful choice as you decide what to save what to spend and what to play. Now, some people make it not consider it a card game. It's definitely a card game. It is, it, it is. is. definitely it a is, card game. It is, but I, I think I can find some people in BDG that will not consider it not a card game. That's the thing. That's right. the, yeah. But uh, we played Summer Wars as we already saw yes. in many videos, so I guess nothing to add. <laughs> yeah. It is a good game. It is a good game though. Like, I don't have any single road against the game. Yeah, and there are lots of uh, variability because mm -hmm. there are lots of expansions and mixes and matches and whatever. S master sets, uh, alliance sets, ultra sets. Uh, yeah, sets. Great, great job done there. Yeah. So, uh, next one is Margaret or MaggieBot. She says that her favorite game is, card game, is uh, St. Petersburg. 
And St. Petersburg is a wonderful card game, asking players to build an engine, balancing what cards will become available in a given round, managing their money, all the while knowing when to switch from building resources to focusing on victory points. Fantastic gateway euro with some new expansions that help diversify the winning strategies from the base game. Yeah, um, I've seen the game, the uh, older version was just as, like not so beautiful, let's say, in a good way. <laughs> I wanted to say in a good way, not a really bad way. Uh, yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, but we the art, our, our art was really bad for me uh, with the, within the old version. And the newer version isn't as beautiful as well, so maybe well, that's why I skip it all the time. Sorry. Yeah. Unfortunately, the artwork and the beauty of the game is quite important for us. It In might, the card games especially. It might not be as important if there wouldn't be so many games out there. Yeah. As there's so many cards and games out there, you can actually choose which one is beautiful yeah. and good. But it seems, still can't play all it seems it's too interesting because uh, I love card games and it seems like uh, that she says that you need to switch from uh, one point of the game to the other point of the game to like you need to do some really harsh decisions probably from where to switch that to that sounds good though the explanation yeah. that Maggie Bond told that like sounds similar to Valley of the Kings where you need to yeah. switch to, to other these are usually actually points. quite good balances because this is one of the core things one of the core balances you have to keep in mind you need to abandon something you know mm -hmm. to get something yeah, yeah. so um, Jeff is the next one and Jeff uh, says a Bloxen or Linko uh, it was Linko is I think the US version <clears throat> When I was first introduced uh, to this game, I could not stop thinking about how the gameplay affected my normal thought process of how to play a card game. I grew up playing trick-taking and set collection card games. This game breaks the, those molds in a very unique and st stylized way. The way you set up your tableau of cards and interact with other players' tableaus and the draw cards is very refreshing. Um, I think we should just get this game at yes, some point. Yes, it was actually exactly my thought. It has been mentioned so many times and we were considering the game as well. So that means that we... And I like foxes. You sold the game to us, guys, honestly. We should we try gonna, it, so. we, we are gonna get the game. Yeah. Next one, Suzanne. Suzanne says, Six Nymphs. This is an always with me game. It's simply a deck of cards, it has simple mechanism, uh, it's uh, simple to teach and it has a wide player count range. But when you play, everything just clicks. The luck is balanced with the way you calculate your card plays. The fact that you do not want to take cards throws players off just enough. And there are so many groans and cheers that happen when you play Six Nymphs. It's an excellent card game for all types of crowds that I think everyone should have a copy of. The other sort of, I think you already classic uh, card game. I actually think I even played it once. Uh, I heard about it not I much. Think. That yeah. Should I try? So should we try it? Because mm, if you don't remember, so. no, I don't think it's our style actually. Yeah. Maybe at some point. Yeah. If somebody sends us a free copy, we'll. Oh. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, let's go to the next one. Clive says, "Is Deus a card enough?" That was um, that was the start of our argue. I don't feel that it's a card game because there is a board, and the way you place the buildings there is one of the really important things there. Mm -hmm. You do most of the things with the card, but that's the second really important thing. So for me, personally, it's not card game anymore. I put it on the question, but I do not consider the, it a card game as well. No, Although you have... in BDG, it's actually mentioned it's card game. Yeah, yeah, the, because the card game is a core mechanic there anyway, because you yeah. get everything from the cards. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that there's a lot of manipulation on the board itself, yeah. although uh, through cards, of course, yeah, through cards, everything goes through cards there. But the thing is that the uh, there's a lot of pieces on the board and the board is like a separate thing there. Yes, right? it's not supportive, it's like part of the game. Yeah, but it's just us and it's yeah, probably considered to be a card game officially, so. 
Yeah, so you, sure, you can uh, disagree yeah. with us. And uh, Clive says about the Deus, uh, there is a funky modular board, but it's all about hand manipulation. Uh, and he says, if if Deus is not considered a card game, then he'll take Sentinels of the Moon Terrors otherwise. So, that's yeah, we're fine with that. Yeah, Sentinels of the Moon is a great game that we sold. <laughs> we had so many expansions, we didn't play all the expansions. We just couldn't get it to the table because it was... It's really hard to play it with two players. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to win with two players, you need more players. Or you, should, you can play it solo with many decks, but we wanted to manipulate only one deck yeah. each, so... Uh, I don't know, just... It's a great game, though. Uh, it really gave the feeling, I think I mentioned me. one That's once already, thing. that each character is really different, and it is not balanced. One can be like uh, physically really strong, another one has strength like mental or, or magic or something and you have to find a way for them to work together so it is really thematical and you actually have to first you choose the cards and you have to first figure out how the characters interact which is really great and it's hard to win and you mm -hmm. get the feeling and then it's oh we did something so <laughs> you are kind of tired but like more emotionally we had we had some great moments with this game. Yeah. Uh, I still have a memory of uh, when we played the free player game, and uh, there was like fantastic or whatever was the sort of um, like angel a angel girl sort of a hero there that Iger was playing, and uh, he basically finished off the villain like while having like three lives left or mm. something like. We were already like injured, dead or something mm -hmm. like that. So it's really cool, it's um, really tense. Yes, it and is And it has tense. memories, it, it creates the memories. Really cool memories. It's fiddly, but there is an app that, as I've heard, actually takes away all the fiddliness. The app is the one that um, takes care, care of like the plus uh, and yeah, minus, the, the, like the modifiers, oh, yeah, the modifiers and like the what is going next. So mm -hmm. if you have the app, if it really works that way, it's amazing because it really takes away the only bad thing for me. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Zoe says bang! Exclamation. <laughs> That's it. Uh, she, um, she, she apologizes that she didn't, she didn't have the time to write all the comments. Um, it's okay, we're commenting still quite a lot yeah. here. We have played bang and it was quite cool when we played it because it was me like two at least two years ago, something like that. Even more. We saw it because of me. Yeah. I'm not One of our into, first games. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, I'm not into into the games that whole game is about hidden roles and figuring out who is who. If it's just part of the game, yeah, sure, why not? But it's the whole game is that. No, it's no. yeah. It's not no. like I like the game that much, but it. Um, we had the uh, bang the dice game as well that we sold eventually because still the same it like, ra random yeah uh, <laughs> but the thing is the bang the dice game uh, definitely is a better and of course faster version of uh, bang at least in my opinion so if you want to get a really fast feeling of bang you should play bang the dice game you should at least try but, but they are different let's say in a way because bang is a card game this is a dice game so let's go to the next one. Uh, Andres says, not fully a card game, but Imperial Settlers, but Imperial Settlers. The combination built with cards can be amazing. It's a card game. It's like totally a card game. That, yeah. So it's like, because basically the expansions are what? Decks of cards. Mm -hmm. So you don't get anything else. Uh, resources for me are there in a supportive manner. Yeah, it's just tokens. Yeah. The board and like tokens that you track what mm -hmm. resources you have. Yeah, I would consider it totally a card yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. And we like the game, uh, but uh, we it's on sale right now. Just eventually. Because of me. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah. The, yeah, but that, I guess it's it, a bit too easy for my taste. I like when the game challenge. Easy? Yeah. I like when game challenges me, so where I have to think there is like 
it's way too yeah I'm doing this okay so I know exactly what I need to do next so I don't have the moments when I have to think where I have to make decisions I have hard decisions it's for your thinking game just uh, no, maybe it just didn't click with us that much, uh, or when we played it last, or maybe it just uh, it didn't st stay fresh for a long time for us. Let's say like that. There are some games that always are fresh when we get to the yep. table. This game just then but don't it's know a good the real game. reason. Yeah, it's really good. Like game. if we get rid of the games that in the most of the cases is like 90% of the case is not a bad game. It's just game not for us. The taste changes, uh, yeah. something else occurs, and there we is... found another solution. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I didn't mean to We have you. the shelf here. Uh, this is our limit. We are not getting anything else, just what fits on the shelf, in the shelf and on top of it. That is going to be our limit. So we are going to be constantly At least selling for now. games. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the next one. Baker um, says, My top card game right now has to easily be Sushi Go. It's compact, uh, sorry, compact, yeah, sorry. And takes about 15 minutes for a full game, which means it's a perfect for introducing to new people. On top of that, the wife, the kiddo, and I. Uh, on top of that, the wife, the kiddo, and I love trying to outguess each other's draft picks. I don't know what he meant here. Ah, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Just I guess the outguessing. Yeah. Every type of card scores in a different way, which means that there are many different strategies for victory. Will you try to collect all the dumplings, just a few dumplings, and you won't score enough points to be worth it? But if you get a bunch, then the payoff is quite nice. What about the sashimi? If you only get two, then you'll get zero points, but grab that third one and you get ten points. This is a great game. Check it out. I have heard quite a lot about the game. It's like constantly coming out somewhere. Like someone is mentioning something else. Uh, I heard that it's a um, That's completely usually what intrigues me. pure... Uh, drafting card game and that's Sounds what we usually don't like we, we uh, like we, it's not like we don't like the drafting mechanic in some games but if it's a part of the game but usually the pure drafting games are not for us so in this duel we I'm didn't not like sure much about that. Uh, shinobi clans we didn't like much so many of these games but maybe maybe tastes change yeah. so maybe we didn't like them before so these were the picks uh, for or from our friends and we'll be back in the next episode of Top Freeze with... We'll try not to skip a week but we'll do it next week. Yeah, it's Top Freeze thematical games so that would be cool. That's maybe we'll be may fun. Maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe we'll even uh, make a new Top Free video even this week, at the end we'll of this see. week. We'll see. To, to like, get, to, get to, to, the, to the schedule. But thematical games will be very interesting. So uh, check out also our Twitter, Instagram, um, and as well, subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel. Share our channel with your friends. If you like the videos, like them, comment, uh, argue with like us. We like feedback, we like yeah. comments, we really enjoy reading your comments. So yeah. Please. More comments always welcome. Uh, argue with us. Uh, say. No, no, no one has argu argued until now. Yeah. It's strange. They use. No, no, is that's it. No. The of Winter is a card game. Or not. Please comment. Hive is a card game. <laughs> Whatever. So, until next time, we'll see you. So, will you say bye or no? No, we'll say may the games be with you. Let's hug the game. We don't have a catchphrase. So Please help with that. Just, yo, yeah, help. <laughs> make, let's make a problem. <laughs> Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.